Good day and welcome to our little course on how to rename a Windows Active Directory domain. Some people will tell you it can't be done, but in fact this has been available since uh, Windows 2000. Uh, Microsoft came up with a little tool called Rendom, and uh, you need to do a couple of steps and pretty much you're on your way. So let's just show you what we have now. And by the way, this is a demonstration, not a death by PowerPoint. So we'll get to the actual process in just a moment, but I want to go over and just give you a background as to where we are. I currently have a domain called urtest1.local. It has a server 22 domain controller as well as a server 16 domain controller. And it's also got an app server, which is just 2012R1, just to make things different. And I've also got a Windows 10 test PC. So again, urtest1.local, I want to change to greatdomain.local. And I don't want to blow anything up. I want everything to be just the way it was before. I want the servers to work. But that gets to a good point about blowing stuff up. What can you hose by doing this? Well, in particular, Exchange. Exchange is not going to tolerate this. So if you're running Exchange on-prem or in hybrid mode, you really can't follow this process. Also, you can run into trouble if you've got your Active Directory already set up with the CA, with the Certificate Authority. Not a lot of people do, but more and more. We're not gonna cover how to handle CAs, but I'll put a link to this thread. We'll go over the steps and then we'll get right into the demo. So the steps are one, turn off your firewall and you're gonna see in a minute uh, in the recording, I didn't do that and that was a mistake. Create a new DNS zone. If you've never done that before, it sounds intimidating, super easy. Don't worry about it, we'll walk you through it. Then you need to run a few rendom, as in rename domain commands. You list it, which creates a file, you make a quick change to the file and you upload it. You then prepare the domain. You have to rename your domain controllers manually, which isn't very hard. You can either do it through the GUI or you can just run this command here, which we'll show you in just a moment. And then you have to fix the DNS using a lovely little tool that's built in called GP Fixup. And you can see it says, hey, stop using the old DNS and start using the new one, which in my case is greatdomain.local. Do the same thing for your NetBIOS. And you'll notice here that, you know, it's gpfixup slash old NB colon, and then the old domain name, but it's not fully qualified. It's not .local. Keep that in mind, easy to screw that up. Next thing, uh, you can run a clean command. You don't have to, but you can. Uh, and then you finish it off. Pretty straightforward. Let's get to it. We're gonna start on our uh, DC uh, that's running Windows Server 2022. But because that's one that holds all of the Fismos, it's top of the tree. Best to start there. All right, so let's launch our DNS, create a new zone, just right click, new zone. It's a primary zone. Yes, yeah, stored in Active Directory. We want it to replicate to all servers in this domain. Next, it's a forward lookup zone. That's what we settled on as a name. Only secure updates, you bet. Standard stuff. Finish. We can then expand the forward lookup zone and see, there it is, there's the new one. Not, nothing much in it, the old one's still got all of the stuff. All right, next step, open a PowerShell. Just right click on your start button and select Windows PowerShell. Of course, you need to run it as an admin. And the command, you just want to run rendom slash list. There it is, and you think, well, I didn't do very much. Well, it actually, yeah, okay, it actually didn't. <laughs> but it did create a little file for you. That file is in C, users, your username, domlist.xml. So just right click on that and edit. And what you've got to do is change your old domain to the new domain. So easiest way to do that is to do edit replace there we go and you'll see it's now great domain dot local great domain dot local great domain dot local great domain just for the net bios name easy just close it make sure it's saved obviously and then just push it back into the system so Upload. It'll know what file it is and it'll push it up. There it is. It's loaded. Now we need to prep the domain. OK, 
Okay, that's an unexpected error. So there are a couple of things I can think of that come to mind right away. Firstly, I may not have waited long enough for my DNS zone to replicate to the other domain controller. And there may just be some sync issues. So I'm gonna run a command I keep handy for this kind of thing, which is this one. And that'll just force a sync. Okay, so that's telling us the RPC server is unavailable. Now, before I started this, I made sure all of the services were fine, so it's not a service issue. My guess is it's the firewall. For the sake of expediency here, let's just turn the firewall off. Yeah, that's not enabled. Let's try that command again. There we go, that looks great. Okay, I'm gonna clear the screen because it's just messy. All right, so let's run the next command. Yay! And you see it automatically wants to reboot. Go look at the other DC. Yep, it's shutting it down as well. All automatic. We'll just let this cycle on its own. I won't make you wait. We'll be back in a second when it comes back up. Okay, both boxes are back. Both domain controllers are happy. Now let's take a quick look at Active Directory and to DNS on both of these. We're not done yet, by the way. There is more to do. Let's look at that forward lookup zone. The new domain, look, there's your Active Directory. And in DNS, you can see it's been renamed. So we're good to go, right? No, we're not. There's still a couple things left to clean up. You can see here that the domain controller is still on, let's go here, is still showing that it's on the old domain. We need to fix that. And 2016 will be the same. All right, so bring up a command prompt, obviously as an administrator, and you just need to rename it. I'd explain the command, but it's pretty much English, so there you go. And then we have to do the same thing on the other domain controller and any other domain controllers we may have. So, command prompt. We need to reboot these. Now we need to fix uh, DNS. Well, specifically what group policy is using for DNS. So let's just right click and select PowerShell admin. And there's a great little tool that uh, does this called GP fix up. It's built in. And if you care, you can take a look at all of the commands. I'm not gonna waste your time with it other than to show you that, yeah, they're there. The command that we need to run is that one, GP fix up slash old DNS, whatever it is, and then what the new DNS is. Boom, and that says, hey, quit using the old DNS, use the new one. And the same thing for our old friend NetBIOS. So you just pop your command in. Now notice here, because it's NetBIOS, it's not fully qualified. You just use, in my case, you are attack test one, you don't use dot local or whatever else. So it's old net BIOS, colon, whatever it is, slash new BIOS. There you go, new net BIOS. Enter. 
Yay. Now we need to remove all of the old hooks. Same thing, you can get the nice list of uh, features if you care. All right, but this cleans up, we're gonna do a run clean, which cleans up the residual junk. Hmm, well that's unexpected, so let's take a look and see if we can figure out uh, if it's a problem with the FISMOs, the Flexible Service Masters, that DOM query. FSMO. I'm going to let that sit for a minute and I'm going to restart my app server and my Windows 10 PC because they will have to be cycled twice for these changes to take effect. And that will buy me some time to think about what's going on. I won't make you wait. Okay, so my Windows 10 box is back. Let's just take a look at what it thinks it... Ah, there we go. Great domain.local. Yay! And let's take a look at App Server here. Great domain.local. Yay. I'm going to reboot these a second time. Okay, so they're back. The only thing that I'm that's stuck in my mind right now is DNS. So let's just take a look at DNS. Well, the old domain is still there. I'm gonna refresh this. Yeah, it's on both of these. Okay, so I'm just gonna manually delete this. Oh yeah, that's generally a really bad idea. <laughs> Bye. There we go. Now let's try that clean command again. Okay, so I took a quick look around. I checked DNS to make sure DNS was fine and on both machines, both servers, and it does appear to be fine. Everything looks registered. Here's the curiosity. When I look at the host name, it's still showing the old domain there. I need to fix that. Which I thought we had done, but apparently not. So there was the command for this one. So I'll change this manually. Change settings. There it is, I need to get rid of that. Yep, you can't change, yep, that's good, more. You bet I want to reboot. I'll do the next one and I won't waste your time with this either. Okay, that didn't work. So I'm going to flush DNS the old fashioned way. Command line. Flush isn't the right word. I'm going to wipe it out. Well, there's a problem. The DNS servers are not set on this one, which is weird because it was, but I will go fix that. Yeah, I definitely didn't set 127, but that's okay. Nothing wrong with 127. It just in case you don't know what that is, it's just yourself. So uh, the two are nine and six. And you want to make sure that it's just the two. In my case, I only have two servers, and there we go. Beep. All right, so let's try that command again to finish. Yes! So that's all that was wrong. Just the DNS entries somehow got screwed up during all of the transition. Let's just take a look at a couple of things, like your Active Directory.
Hey, if you found this video useful, please give us a like. It really helps with the Google algorithm. And of course, subscribe's always appreciated. If you have a question or a comment, put it uh, down below. We'll get back to you. And you can always get a hold of us at www.urtech. That's www.urtech.ca. Thanks and have a great day. Bye bye.